In order to plot your boreholes in Kingdom Suite, and so that you've got depth and you've got time, so that you can see your boreholes on your time sections, um, I created an Excel spreadsheet, and you can see on the left-hand side here I've got my borehole names. Um, and these are repeated several times because I've got several formation tops within my boreholes. So here I've got measured depth. So over here, I know the white hill was at 1,300 meters. This one here is the top of the Table Mountain group. And this is the top, sorry, top of the Bockefeld group, which is within the Cape Super group. Here is top of the Table Mountain. So all of these were within borehole KL. And so then what happens is that I know which horizon corresponds with these values um, on my seismic section. And that the only reason why I know this is from historic data. I know that the two strong reflectors were the echo shales and the basement, which is actually not in this borehole. You can see it in this borehole here, GG. And then these two in the middle were the two weak reflectors. So it's not a very good, well, it's not the most accurate way of doing it, but often with historic data, this is the only way you can do it. And so on my seismic section, I saw that um, close to borehole KL on my seismic section, that the echo shell was at 0 0.7 seconds, book felt at 1 second, table mountain at 1.4. And so what I do then is I write this out for all my boreholes. So I plot these boreholes in Kingdom Suite, I find out what the time section is closest to them. And so if we actually go here to Kingdom Suite, I'm going to just double click on KL. Um, not always easy to find your boreholes in Kingdom. Highlight. Okay, so KL is over here in my side section. So I'm going to zoom to it. Okay, so here's borehole KL. And I'm going to look at the seismic section here. Give it a second. Okay, so you can see KL here. And if you're in time here and you've only put depth values into your to Kingdom Suite, it, it won't show you these formation tops. So these are only showing up because I have already put time in. So I look at this, and from um, other seismic sections, I know that the shallowest reflector is the Echo Shales, then it goes Bockefeld, then it goes Table Mountain. Really not easy to see the Table Mountain one here. Um, I obviously continued this from another seismic section. I saw it clearly on another seismic section, and I decided to mark it here. And so um, let's maybe look at this long seismic section here and see if it's any clearer. Still not that clear. So, yeah, I mean, this Table Mountain section, and it's quite far away from ultimately where it plots. Um, so let's rather just say, I know that the Echo Shales close to KL. You can see here, is that a, um, well, somewhere here you can see, I think if you reduce the size of your window, I put my mouse where it is, and in the bottom of the screen there, you can see time is 0 0.73. Going down to the Bockefeld, my Bockefeld, as at a time of one second. And so that, I take those values there and I put it back here. So this, you can see I said two-way travel time from seismic, which was at 0 0.7, it was at one. This one is a bit iffy. Um, I must have got it from somewhere. Um, and so you do that with all your sections. I would now go back to Kingdom Suite. I'd go across to my um, next borehole. So I know that there's one over here. Oh, sorry. So this is borehole QU, I think. I double click on my seismic section. Sorry, it's borehole SA. Um, and in the seismic section, it's a lot clearer here. This is, is the echo shales. I can see it's at a time of 1.2. This is continuing here as a strong reflector at the top of the cape or the Bockefeld at a time of 1.4. Um, a bit of a weaker one here is the Table Mountain. It's at 1.6. And then down here is my basement which a uh, very broad range. You can see I've got low res data. It's at a time of about two. So again, I would go back to my spreadsheet for SA. See, I haven't even put in my basement value here because I felt it was too iffy. So my echo shells, I know these depths from the boreholes. These are the measured depths. And I write down the two-way travel time here. And so once you've done that from all your seismic sections, you're actually going to plot these up. And so here's a plot of what I have. And so it's measured depth in this direction on the y-axis and two-way travel time on the x-axis. And so I've got several things here. Um, 
Sorry, ignore that. So you can see this blue series, blue and the purple, is actually the, the data values from this table that I've, I've just created from the boreholes. So these are actually the measured depth from the boreholes, we know for sure. And the two-way travel times are a bit iffy because we, we're guesstimating or we're taking the best guess as where the strong reflector is. We're giving the two-way travel times. We plot it up and we fit a best fit curve to it and you get the equation and you, you're looking at a second order polynomial is going to be your best fit. So if we look here, if I click on my trend line, format trend line, I've clicked on polynomial and I've made it second order. Um, this course that I did, they recommended that. I have added other things here if you are lucky enough to have the data. This green, these green data points are a sonic log from a borehole. And then these red data points are actually used interval velocities that they determined in this area. So I've used several data points. I've put a base fit line through it. And this is my velocity equation now. So if, um, you can also plot two-way travel time and measure depth this side. Depends what you want to ultimately find out. But the main thing is that in your size sections, you have two-way travel time. You can grid surfaces in, in Kingdom that are in two-way travel time. How do you convert it to depth? You use this equation to convert it to depth. And so that's how I was able to create a depth map of the Karoo, was I took my grid of the depths to the base of the Karoo, and um, in I extracted it in Geosoft. I multiplied it by this equation, and I created a grid that provided depth estimates. And the ultimate nice thing is that now you've actually got borehole data that you can show in your paper that confirms you're at least close to picking the right horizon. So you can see that this um, this curve, well, sorry, this equation, which I'm using for the whole Karoo Basin, so it's a very broad approximation because things will change within the basin, especially the fact that there's more dolerites in the west and the east. That's going to affect your velocities. But I've used that equation to determine these, um, to determine the conversion from depth to time. And you can see my echo shells approximately correlates with this green. Borker felt a bit off, but it's at yellow. So at least, and here's Table Mountain, you're approximately in the right area. And so if you actually go here, and if you've inserted these boreholes already, you can see the other YouTube had a video how to do that. I've got my borehole name, and I go here to Formation Tops. Um, this here, um, initially I had these depths in here, and then I was able to convert this to time. And you can actually, you can see here the time depth curve that I used um, is a set one. I, I input it in, into GSR, uh, sorry, into Kingdom Suite. I took this equation, I input it into Kingdom Suite, and it was able to calculate these times for me. So that will be the next tutorial is how in Kingdom Suite to put in this time equation.